Well, my name is John Hudson. Welcome to Fred Dexter and Friends. I'm going to be presenting today. Uh, if anybody is here, feel free to join us here. Plenty of seats available. Uh, if not, uh, if you can hear me from out there in the uh, kind of foyer area, uh, I'm here to present. So I'm not going to let Lenton hold me back. Uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm John Hudson. Uh, today what we're going to be talking about is a children's book series that I created called The Fantastic Adventure of Fred Dexter and Friends. Uh, I was here a couple of weeks ago uh, and I was asked uh, to present and I am truly excited to be here at Johnson County Community College and I'm truly excited to present about this wonderful book series. Um, I just wanted to kind of take you back. I'm kind of an outgoing person. I'm young at heart. Uh, so I have kind of a uh, children's perspective on a lot of different things just because of the nature of how I grew up. I don't know about you, but back in the day for me, I spent a lot of my spare time uh, eating, you know, bologna sandwiches and watching cartoons all day. So uh, for me, I had anything or watching on TV from Scooby-Doo to the Jetsons to uh, I'm trying to think. You know, they had Transformers, He-Man, they had all kind of cartoons and things for us to watch. Well, one day when I was kind of sitting around at home, and I'm talking, I'm kind of fast forward and moving into like maybe 2016, 15, I thought to myself, it would be so, so cool to have a cartoon series that would kind of feature a young man from my own hometown of Kansas City, Kansas. And with that hometown uh, kind of adventure, I wanted uh, the world to see someone who is actually being a leader in a positive way, giving positive information to kids on a bigger and broader scale. So when Fred Dexter came about, I had this idea, but it was all birthed around some of the things that I've done, or excuse me, some of the things that I've seen as a little kid. I remember watching the Flintstones and I was infatuated by Fred Flintstone. Like I was literally the guy who sat down and was like, I cannot believe he is driving a car without a windshield, a uh, rear shield, an engine, uh, anything of that nature. I was, I was that kid that was like, wow, he is actually driving a car with his feet, you know? So those types of things for me was just infatuated because the creativity behind that holds a lot of true value to uh, being creative and just trying to come up with new and exciting things for people to look at and to listen to. So um, Fred Dexter was created within about a week's time. I sat down with a good friend of mine by the name of Ruman Armstrong who was the illustrator of Fred uh, Dexter and I came up with this idea for this young man to uh, have about four or five friends who did everything but make the right choice. Uh, and within that saying that, Fred is the only one out of the group. He has all these friends, but everybody that he comes in contact with, they always make bad decisions. So uh, within the creative process of Fred, I needed to create some people who has kind of similar issues of backgrounds to what we would consider to be friends or know people of this nature who have particular behavioral issues or behavioral problems kind of growing up. So I created uh, Fred, who is the leader. He's the one that actually makes the right decisions at the, towards the end of the book. And he actually helps his friends determine whether or not are you going in the right direction or in the wrong direction about what you're considering to do next. But then you have uh, four or five other friends. So you got Cameron, you have Benjamin, you have Taj, uh, you have uh, Simone, and then you have Paul. So none of these characters up here are up here now, but if you was to get the book series, you would come to find out that you have a complainer, <laughs> you have a procrastinator, you have the know-it-all, you have the uh, person who really just don't care, and then you have, of course, uh, Fred Dexter, the leader. And you have the bully as well. So I thought it would be really, really cool if I was to put myself in the actual book series. So, Within them going to school and participating every single day of the classroom work, you know, recess, which we all loved, at least I did growing up, going to the lunchroom and then going to class, you needed to have someone who, I guess, helped instruct the kids to help do the right thing in the classroom. So I put myself in the actual book as well, and I'm pretty much myself. My name is Mr. Hudson in the book. 
So what I did was kind of took from an era of cartoons, which I said earlier, as far as the Jetsons, the Flintstones, uh, He-Man, Ninja Turtles, things like that. But I wanted to kind of put a twist in it to where it would be kind of in the sense of today's generation understanding the true value of making the right choice. So the very first book that was created uh, was about bullying. And bullying is a big thing, uh, not only in the schools, but across America today. So I wanted to make a book to where everybody can relate to bullying on another level where we can help remove that particular barrier for success for kids. No one likes to be bullied. So there's an actual uh, bully in the book by the name of Paul who was created, and we call him Paul the Punisher because he actually is a true bully. Um, and you have to read the book. I'm not going to explain like what the book was about, but I will say this. Very funny, very informational, very, very uh, candid into what today's society is dealing with as far as bullying, as far as some discrimination issues or racial issues, things of that magnitude. And uh, I think kids can, I put it on such a level where kids can understand what's the difference between kind of the good and the bad things or help them determine what they could consider uh, to be making the right choice. So at the end of every single book, there's this thing called uh, Fred's Facts. I actually have uh, a copy of the book here. At the end of every book, uh, you have Fred's Facts. And Fred's Facts basically kind of go over the right choices that he or the kids did in the book, what was analyzed in the book, and what was kind of created to make some better choices or would allow the kids to answer questions to make better choices on what they would do and if they was in Fred's situation. So it's a great, great read for kids. And I love it because it's color on the outside, but on the inside it's black and white. And the reason why I did that is because a lot of kids don't really understand the value of interacting inside of a book from coloring in there or knowing how they can make the creators themselves. So I gave kids kind of an access notice of going inside the book, coloring for themselves, reading it, and kind of being a part of the story and making it better for them and relate to them uh, in that way. So if you look, yes, the book is color on the outside, but on the inside is black and white. And I did that on purpose, people. A lot of people are, well, why is it not color in the book? I did that on purpose so the kids could interact inside of the book and actually talk and color to make it more valuable to them, all right? The second book is about the proper use of social media. If you're looking at me right now, you're probably looking at me uh, maybe on your phone, you could be looking at me on the video, you can look at me on YouTube, Facebook, anything of that nature. So I really wanted to do the second book regarding around making better choices on social media for kids. How are they doing that today? I don't think it's being publicized. You don't see a bus going around advertising, hey, let's make social media safer for kids. Nobody's doing that. So I really wanted to create something where kids could put themselves in a position to say, you know what, I want to make better decisions or ex can somebody explain to me how to make better decisions from uh, using their cell phone or any type of social media uh, avenue. So the second book is really just about that. Um, there's some things in the second book I want to explain, but I'm not because I want you guys to purchase the book. But to make a long story very short, if you look now, a lot of kids are having cell phones now like never before. Between uh, the very early ages of second, sometimes even first grade, all the way up. And I have a four-year-old son, and my son can almost work the cell phone better than me. And it's incredible because I'm like going, oh my gosh, these kids are picking up things like, like that very, 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 very fast. So uh, the second book goes into social media and how could we help kids make better choices with that. Um, one of the things that I love about Fred Dexter is the fact that when I was coming up as a kid, there were not a lot of cartoons from an urban perspective where the lead character was a minority individual. Um, and I really would appreciate that coming from the fantastic adventures of Fred Dexter and friends because it allows people of color to see themselves in certain situations to where they are actually the leaders and they're making better choices. A lot of kids don't typically see that today so I really wanted to expound on that and to let that be known to kind of bridge the gap to see kids of themselves in certain particular 
situations making great decisions. I think that is very important. Now, what I'm getting ready to talk about is kind of on the flip side of Fred Dexter and Friends. I'm in the college right now. If I, if, I, if I was to look 100 feet, maybe 50 feet in front of me, I got kids studying. They're grinding out through their books. Spring break is over, and they're trying to get through, getting ready for finals and things of that nature. Well, I love this particular college. One, because yes, I'm a product of here, uh, Johnson County. I actually played basketball here back in the 90s. Don't tell nobody that, because now you're gonna know my age. However, um, from a college perspective, this book holds a lot of value to every student. Not just from a children's book standpoint, but from a familiarity with how to be educated and how to improve on your skills if you wanted to go into business, if you wanted to do something from an animation perspective, which they have animation classes here, and even if you wanted to talk about the true value of education and how it's important, even from starting from a little kid, even up until adulthood. So this book is more than just an educational experience. It's an actual educational experience that holds value to how to create a business and move forward with a business if you have a business idea. So I really want the kids just to not see this as just a book, but actually a business adventure that they can produce themselves and maybe be productive in the future on it if they decide to do something to that nature. Uh, I'm going to, I know I'm going to ask any questions if anybody wants to know it, but um, I'm an author of about 13 books altogether. This is my first children's book series. Uh, I consider myself kind of an expert now that I've done this so many times as far as writing books and speaking in front of people. This is what I love to do. Um, there's a few people who have books out and they're world known, they're doing their own thing. Uh, people who you may have admired, uh, some who you may have known, whether it be from an athletic perspective. I think Kobe Bryant just came out with a book, uh, Love That Guy. Um, uh, Michelle Obama just came out of, with a book, of course. We all love her, so first lady. So it's just how people take book writing and make it within a business aspect. I don't think people think of it in that sense, uh, but they need to because it can open up a lot of doors for many different things. So one of the, or another reason why I expound on Fred Dexter and Friends is because yes, I am truly wanting to see about allowing this to become a cartoon on TV. Um, my kid, my son, my, I have two boys. One is 12, another is four. They both love cartoons. My youngest is on um, the trains, Thomas, the trains. I don't know if you guys ever heard uh, about that. He was on PJ Masks. PJ Masks was like a big thing. Some of the adults may not know these particular cartoons because for whatever reason, they don't have kids. But if you have kids, you're gonna find out real quick that the kids love cartoons. So I had to be uh, knowledge on that area. And my son will tell me, Dad, please turn back to XYZ cartoon. And I'll be like, okay. And I do that for him. And he's just, he's all in the TV making sure he's paying attention. So, um, so I really wanted to show this, but uh, I really wanted to expound on the fact that we need more uh, cartoons in the sense of people looking at it from a diversity standpoint in such a way that it calls a positive change and it helps remove barriers for success for individuals who need to see themselves making better choices. Um, and that's what I wanted to do through the book and I wanted to at least explain some of the things that I went through to try to create the book itself. So I want to show you a video. Uh, I did this video back in 2014. It is when I originally first wrote the first book of a guy by the name of uh, Anthony uh, Nickens. Uh, actually uh, did the actual video, but it is the theme song of Fred Dexter and Friends. And I actually uh, enjoyed uh, creating this process with Anthony, and I think you guys are going to love it. Uh, I went to Coronado High School and did the actual filming of it. Uh, it's in Kansas City, Kansas, of course. The character was created, and I am from, yes, the dot, Wyandotte County, Kansas, where uh, this whole kind of adventure was created from. So I hope you enjoy the video, and then uh, after we get done, I'm gonna move uh, forward with that. But also, too, a lot of people don't know about me, I'm gonna share a small fact about myself, is that I love music. If anybody who knows me, I, play, I played in churches around the, the Kansas City area, and they know me from playing the bass or the drums. 
Um, but they forgot that I love rap music and I actually created the rap on this video. And uh, a good friend of mine by the name of Joseph Love uh, was the one who did the actual beat. So you gotta remember, kids love music as well. Uh, if you look, uh, Trolls, I think the theme song of the Trolls with Justin Timberlake and all those other people who do music, they will get up, jump, dance around and do their thing. Uh, but there's something about this Fred Dexter video I think you guys are gonna like. So uh, as I get it kind of prepared, uh, let's see what we got here. Hello, my name is Jason Hudson, and I want to introduce to you a fantastic adventure with Fred Dexter and Friends. Uh, Wait, who's yeah. Dexter? Yeah. A revolution of a schoolboy. From Casey K, man, they said he hot. Even though he's not a rude boy. Some people hate him because he's from the dot. Uh, but that don't even faze him. Yeah, because you know he got that willpower. Uh, with focus driven in his nature. Yeah, his aspirations go way high. Uh, skyrocket to the top. Yeah, a fantastic adventure, uh, even though he from the hood, man, you got the whole world with you. Who is it? It's Fred Dexter and friends, back in school and we at it again. Fred Dexter and friends, refuse to lose, we was born to win. Hey, yo, I got my boy Sauce Remix on the track. Yeah, yeah, clap with me if you're feeling me right now. One, two, three, go. If I was going to look up to someone, it's Fred Dexter. Always learning, now we having fun. Fred Dexter, hands in the air if you want. Fred Dexter, you can sing along. Just the one, Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter. I just want to be cool as Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter, do my thing, they call me school like Fred Dexter. All I Dexter. ever wanted to be like was Fred Dexter, super Fred smart, Dexter. staying focused on what's right, not much extra, not I could extra. never let them stop me, no. they could quit but not me, not me. I'ma stay true to my goals and succeed, goals. just watch me, <laughs> see, Fred don't do no faking when it comes to making grades, he might hit them folks in they name, but I bet he get straight A's yeah. and that's just how it go when you, you got the motion, catch the wave of education, hit you with that ocean, focus driven dedication, yeah that's just my potion, coasting like a surfer, riding like a Uber, books all on my coaster, college in my future, cause that's what's really popping girl, yeah that's really cool sir, well that's what Fred said, and look at him, he learning up, this song is so high, we hit charts and burn it up, knowledge is power, we get it all and turn it up. Only thing to ask now is y'all gonna learn a what? Let's go. If I was gonna look up to someone, it's Fred Dexter. Always learning, now we having fun. Fred Dexter, hands in the air if you want. Fred Dexter, you can sing along. It's the one. Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter. I just wanna be cool as Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter, Fred Dexter. Thank you. So I just wanted to, I, I guess, you know, show the video, of course, but also, too, I just wanted to show just the value of video sound and the creativity aspect of creating something. Um, you know, the book is one thing, but I've already been on TV several times about the, uh, the music video. Uh, the kids actually love it when I go into the schools. And so I know this is kind of a, a you know, young adult thing, but you never know. Your story, 
uh, your creativity uh, in regards to a process of something that you might have wanted to do can actually blow up and be, become something great. Um, but I, I really love the video. This was taken at Coronado uh, Middle School. Uh, and as you see, the kids had a lot of fun. We probably filmed that in about two hours. Uh, and I'm still hurting, believe it or not, on that backflip. I haven't done a backflip like that since 90, what, nine? Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. And, you know, I just want to encourage individuals who have dreams, aspirations of doing something bigger than themselves to continue on that endeavor. You never know who you will meet. You'll never know uh, the kind of contacts you will make uh, from that. Uh, I tell people this all the time. Um, I'm, I'm from Wyandotte County. Uh, I came to Johnson County for opportunity and boom, bam, kapow, it happened. Um, I met some great people here. Uh, being a counselor here was awesome. Hopefully I can continue in that endeavor because I love counseling students. I have two master's degrees now. Uh, I have one in education, of course, one in counseling. And, uh, you know, success to me is uh, the actual, I guess, intelligent or geniality of completing what you started. I tell people all the time, you go to college, that's one thing. Great, anybody can go to college, all right? I get it, you need to go, but I don't tell people to go to college. You know, you're looking at me like, what? No, I don't tell people to go to college. I tell people to finish college. That is the key. You give and you actually create great foundations with people like um, uh, Ms. Sean Smith who is here or Jim who is here. You never know who you'll meet to help you finish what you start. It is a great thing to start it, but it is an even more awesome thing to finish what you start, okay? So um, I just wanna end on that note. Uh, if anybody has questions for me, that's, this would be the time. I'm just gonna open up kind of the floor and see if anybody has any questions regarding anything about the book, about the video, about Fred, the process, anything. I'm just gonna open it up at this time. <laughs> How long did it take you to write the book? How long did it take me to write a book? Good question, Sean. Uh, it took me about, I want to say it took me about three weeks. I actually wrote the second book with the Coronado students. So the second book, they are the co-authors of the second book, which is called Smartphone Dumb Brain, which is about, you know, the proper uses of social media. You know, you got a lot of smartphones out there, but and not too many good intelligent brains kind of behind them sometimes. So uh, yeah, it took me about three to four weeks and the process from there just kind of ventured and we created everything else from there. About three or four weeks we wrote it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anybody else has any thoughts? How did you get it published? How did I get it published? Great question. Um, there is a company that I tell people about, and they always look at me like, are you serious? Uh, they changed the name. It used to be called Create Space. Uh, but now it is called, I believe, Direct Publishing Group, and it is an Amazon uh, publishing group. And guess how much it costs to publish my book? Anybody got any wild guesses out there? Well, I'm just going to say, yeah, y'all know that commercial that says free, 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 free. Free, 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 free. Yeah, it was free. I self-published it myself. And it didn't cost me anything. Um, the thing that I had to pay for was, of course, getting the edit, coming up with the illustrator, and uh, kind of uploading it to their website to get it published. But nowadays, you can cut out a lot of the publishing kind of professionals, per se, by doing it yourself. And that's kind of like what I did. Yeah, great question. Anybody else? I brung some, uh, I brung a few gifts. Uh, let me see here. I wrote a book called Reasons to Believe last year, um, which is basically a lot of kids don't believe in themselves and Everybody's looking and believing kind of in the wrong stuff, like the whole social media thing and kind of looking at stuff, YouTube, and they're forgetting about believing in the gifts that they have for themselves and uh, having confidence on some of the things that they have. So I wrote a book called Reasons to Believe, and I share a message of my faith 
in here and kind of like how I become who I am, so to speak. So um, if you want to check it out, all these are on Amazon.com. I wrote a book called The Difference That Makes the Difference. Uh, let's see. This is the new edition, Seven Keys to Success, Recapturing Your True Swagger. Um, best-selling author, this I was featured in uh, uh, a boys and girls club on this in Chicago. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, this one right here is called In the Middle of It. I don't know what your it is, but everybody's always in the middle of something. So this book is more of a faith-based book that I always kind of encourage people no matter where you start or where you finish, you're going to be in the middle of something. So this might help someone deal with how to be in the middle of certain situations. Um, it's also a faith-based book as well. Um, I'm even giving some free advertising here. For people who don't know my mother, Dr. Evelyn Hill, she wrote a book called Women Under Construction. She's going to be at Johnson County soon, and I just wanted to you know, kind of make mention uh, the apple don't fall too far from the tree to an extent. Uh, so when you get a chance, I'm actually giving these away here today. Um, then this is when you know it's, you kind of like say, okay, it's real. I, bought a, a, I created a book or wrote a book about how to write books. So this one's called Arthur's Express Handbook. Anybody who want to learn how to write a book? Anybody who has a story to tell? Anybody has what they call a testimony or have a strong ambition to write or be an author, this is a great book to have. Um, I wish somebody would have gave me my own book before I started. I don't even sound right. Um, so, but no, I, I share some great keys in here and I think anybody who wants to uh, write a book, I think they will learn a lot. And this is kind of the faster way of writing a book where people think it takes all day. Uh, and then this is my bestseller here. I was featured uh, on USA Today with this book. It's called Ignored and Ignited. I share my life story of coming to Johnson County, playing basketball in two countries. I played in Fiji. I played in New Zealand. I wish I was in Fiji right now. That sounds nice. Um, but I share my story of my high school coach literally telling me I would never play uh, outside of the four walls of my high school. And he obviously was wrong, but I played outside of the four walls of my country, and I represented uh, my faith in doing that as well. So uh, a couple of counselors uh, are in this book, people like Dave Ellis, Ron Staten, all the people that used to work here, some of those people are in this book. Still to this day, oh, those big, big spot in my heart. So uh, let's see, I'm going to give these out here. Uh, I may not have enough for everyone, but uh, that is the Fred Dexter, um, I want to say, audio book. And I didn't bring, good thing I didn't bring a whole, whole lot, but I got, okay, I got two, and I may got some more for you guys. But I actually uh, did a music video called Reasons to Believe that um, a lot of the older adults like. Uh, where I went to my high school, I was in the Hall of Fame of my high school, and I kind of gave it a commemorative uh, video of thanking them for giving me the opportunity to be a reasons to believe, not um, honoree. Would you guys, guys like to see the video? Or, no, how much time do I have? How much time do I have? Am I good? Okay. So let's see here. So I might as well make this announcement because I have... Uh, at 4 o'clock, I'm doing a radio interview today. Uh, I am actually in the process of doing a rap album. Uh, I know you guys are thinking, like, what is this tall guy with a suit going to do with rap music? Well, you'd be surprised. Uh, I love rap music, and I also like other types of music. I like all genres of music. So uh, I'll be explaining more of that uh, on the radio today. But let me go ahead and see if I can pull this video up here. Focus driven. I like this right here. Yo, guess who's back? 
It's your boy, Second John, coming back to rap. Brad Dexter ain't the only thing cracking. In fact, I'm motivated just to keep you stimulated to the word of God. So let me show you how. Yeah, it all started as a dream, a vision of a hustle. I'm doing some big things from Kansas City streets to balling overseas. Now I'm back in the studio to fulfill my dream. Yeah, people saying I'm a miracle. They be like, Jay and Hood, how you doing, bro? Listen, I'm undercover with my mission. I'm something like a lost bull. Call me Scotty Pippen. Certified champion. Why y'all still tripping? Best-selling author. Check my intuition. Rhyme for no reasons, but the reasons for my rhymes is to elevate your mind state, to keep your mind straight. Huh. So homeboy, look up. I'm feeling like Master P, man. I got the hook up. There's no limit to your dreams. You can do anything. I'm living proof. That's the reason why I wrote the song. Yeah, believe. I got a reason to believe. Don't let nobody stop you from your dreams. I got a reason to believe. I'm gonna do great things. I got a reason to believe. Gonna fulfill my destiny. I got a reason to believe. With the faith that my size of a mother's I take a look out of my window pane and all I see. It's pain, uh, it's sort of like my people are strange. All they wanted is the ice with the rocks and blame. But they forgot about the Christ and the rock that came. But me, I'm the evidence of life to change. I done broken through some shackles, shifted some things. Shifted my way through pain like Corvettes in the rain. Haters tried to take my breath, but I'm breathing again. I'm not Kendrick Lamar. I don't have a tight car, but I'm far blessed in whatever they eyes could see. You, I'm a different type of brother while they grind and freaks. I'm undercover with the topics and the line and peace. Stressing to teach when you see me out on the streets holler back focus driven taking over these streets this is from coast to coast man i gotta receive better get i got the key it's the reason to believe let's go i got a reason to believe don't let nobody stop you from your dreams i got a reason to believe i'm gonna do great things i got a reason to believe gonna fulfill my destiny i got a reason to believe with the faith that my side What's up? This is John Hudson. Listen, it is not by coincidence that you are listening to this song right now. I want to let you know if you got a dream, if you got a goal, if there's an aspiration that you desire to do, I'm telling you, as a living proof, you can do anything that you want to. It comes down to one word. <laughs> it's belief. Sing it, right. To every son and daughter, have faith, you can walk on. To every son and daughter, have faith, you can walk on water. N nothing's impossible with Jesus, you are unstoppable. This is your time, this is your season. All around the world. Don't let nothing hold you Dallas, back. Texas, you New York, now, Kansas baby. City, you in there. London, Japan, let's England, go, Fiji, New Zealand, California, <laughs> international. Anything's possible, man. If I can do it, you can do it too. All you got to do is believe. 2018, Reasons to Believe book in stores now. So anyway, I thought I'd show you guys that. I got a, a rap album coming out, probably be this out this time next year. Uh, all positive stuff, very, very, very excited about it. So um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for listening to me today. Um, I'm not a stranger here at Johnson County. Uh, hopefully uh, I'll be here a little bit more. Um, and I just love this college. Uh, very great people here. Uh, very great uh, people who, did, not just here, but people who are here who care. So um, you guys who are at this particular school, consider yourselves lucky, consider yourselves blessed. Uh, you have some very great, uh, innovative, uh, intelligent people here, and whatever I can do to help, the college already knows that uh, I'll be here full force to help out wherever I can. So thank you so much, guys, for your time, and I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation today. Thank you.